What else is important when preparing for a negotiation? We already co covered a couple of things. We talked about how you need to think about interests in advance. You need to think about your own interests because we're often not aware of where these positions that we put out actually come from. So we need to dig deeper in preparation and think about why is this important? How does that matter? What do I really want to achieve? And then you also need to think about the other side's interests because only if you can satisfy what the other side needs will you be able to get a deal? Many people say, why would I think about what they want? But that's inherently short-sighted because without you satisfying their needs in this negotiation, you're not going to have a deal yourself. So very importantly also to sit down and think about the interests of the other side. The other thing we already talked about is thinking about your BATNA. What is it exactly? How can you improve it? What can you do to bolster it? And what's their perception and how can you maybe get them extra information that changes their perception on what your BATNA is. The other thing to always think about when you go into a negotiation, and we talked about that briefly, is options. Because once you've, once you've found out what the interests are for you and for the other side, that's when you need to start becoming more creative and think about what other options there could be to satisfy those interests. Because once we're in a negotiation, it's simply too stressful and there's too much pressure to start getting creative and coming up with a bunch of options. It's the last thing we want to do in there. So having a, a toolbox, so to say, of ready-made options for various scenarios ahead of time can be a huge lifesaver and deal-making deal -making support once you're in that negotiation. So those are the three we already mentioned. What else you need to be on top of in your negotiation preparation is setting goals. People underestimate the power of having a set goal in a negotiation. So based on your interest, always again, first you need to realize why do I do this? What's most important? But based on that, what you want to do is set goals and set priorities not only just say this and this and this is what I want to achieve, but also prioritize how important it is to you. Some people recommend that if you really want to go deep on that, that you write the, a MIT list, which is the list where you say the M is M must have. The first category are some things that I absolutely must achieve. If I can't have that, I'm going to need to walk out of that negotiation. The I stands for ideally have. These are things that are important to you and that, you, that you'd that you really like to have, but they're not a deal breaker if you can't. And the T, the third letter in the MIT, MIT list, MIT sounds very German there, I guess MIT list, but then that sounds so Massachusetts. The, the T in any case is for tradables. So what is there that I'd like to have optimally, but I can trade it for something that's more important to me from the other side. If something is high on my interest list and it's low on theirs, can we trade that and vice versa? So the tradables are matters that I'd be willing to give away in return for something else that's of more importance to me. So that's your goals that you set. And one more thing you need to prepare in most of the negotiations, because it's usually about numbers, is your numbers. What is your bottom line? What's your walkaway price? What is your goal what's your opening price so for the for the for the seller's perspective for example you usually have the minimum that you're willing to sell for that might be 150 but optimally you'd love to reach 200 so you start at 230 and then it gives you a more concrete framework to negotiate from and it gives you a better chance to actually get what you want if you have thought about these numbers and where you're going to settle them. That way, we'll talk about that in a moment. I think you're also pr pr um, protecting yourself from, for yourself from being framed by the other side who might put out the first number. And one last thing that you need to prepare. There's so many things you need to prepare. You can spend days on it. One last thing that's really important to mention here is that you need to prepare for the information exchange and for the question part. You need to think about what do I share with the other side? What questions do I ask? What do I need to know in order to confirm the assumptions that I've made about their interests? And what do I need to know in order to work with their interests? 
because the challenge is that we we tend to only share what's necessary. We believe then let me share just what you absolutely need. But the exact reverse is what makes interest-based negotiation work, us only holding back what we absolutely need to hold back rather than only sharing what we absolutely need to share. So you need to think ahead of what is it that I cannot share and for the rest sequence when you'll be sharing it. Don't give it all away at once, but give away bit by bit, getting back some information from the other side, giving a bit more. But it's easier to know what you're giving away and what you can't if you have prepared for that. And it's the same with questions. We need to ask more questions to find out what it's about for them and not the kind of fact-finding questions we do as lawyers, but good open questions that get us into learning what the deal can look like.